What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter III. That's right. I'm a proper bloke. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> yes, Chuck likes to start offending people at second one of recording. Um, <laughs> but we do have a guest I, today. I, um, no, I just, that's my normal accent. I, I do this American accent. Oh, for you're, the show, you're faking it. Okay. Yeah. I see. I yeah. See. I mean, that's it. That's how I normally talk. Stage accent. Yeah, something like that. Uh, our guest today is Jay Tompkins. What's going on, Jay? Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's nice. Nice to be on board. It's taken a while for us to, to get this one going. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you uh, being on. For anyone who hasn't seen your amazing demos and things online, uh, could you give a quick intro into who you are and what you do? Well, yeah, you've introduced my name. I'm Jay Tompkins. I've been like an engineer, I guess, for like a decade. But most people that might have seen me online will know me for creating all sorts of animations and sort of whatever comes to my head, like the whole uh, line of bringing ideas to life, right? And what I like to do is I like to build whatever idea I have and then kind of share tips and tricks around how I built it with anything that I could use really if it's something new coming to the platform or if it's like some particular tool or but then my day-to-day -day, I'm a senior DX engineer at Vassal. Nice. That kind of wraps it up. <laughs> yeah I'd say that covers it. And what position on the pitch do you play? I play central defensive midfield. Oh so <laughs> yeah. A quick shift to a football pronounced soccer depending on where you are right where you come from yeah uh our one listener uh knows how much of a football fan i am and uh that i call it football because you use your feet not egg ball game <laughs> yeah how american football became called football is just another discussion for another day i think but oh i don't understand I, i'm kind of indifferent about it i don't mind it either way but it's interesting to me that I don't know, like it's kind of a weird tangent story, but I meet my wife, she's living in Seattle, and Seattle just happens to be one place where they're really into football. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting how that all came about. So yeah, going to Seattle and being downtown there and they have flags for like the team and stuff, it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, and they have a long history, at least for, for us in sports, like... Uh, the NASL team, USL team, coming into the MLS team. So there's a lot, a lot of heritage there. But what team was your favorite? That's what the ones you went to, you've, you've got to tell me now. <laughs> All right. Well, first, let's, I will. Let's, let's have let's, some whiskey. Let's do it while we yeah. introduce the whiskey. Okay. So yeah. today we're having Eagle Rare, which is a fairly popular Buffalo Trace distilled 10 year. Yes. Nice and it's bottle. Rare. It is eagle it says it right on, rare. Right on the bottom. I know. It's rare. It's, couldn't be more American, I guess. <laughs> but uh, all right. So it's 90 proof, age 10 years. The mash bill is undisclosed, but this is uh, thought to be one of Buffalo Trace's low rye mash bills. So under 10% rye, high corn, all that kind of fun stuff. This was actually one that I used to get. All This used to be like my go-to all the time where I was like, oh, I'm getting a nicer bottle. Hang out with friends. It's like 30 bucks. It's gone up in price quite a bit, but yeah. still is, I think. 30 a, bucks is like the shipping for this bottle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Seriously, mm -hmm. anymore. Whiskey is crazy. So as we smell and think about this, so the first European match I ever went to in person was actually at the San Siro. It was Inter Milan versus Fiorentina. And it was wow. the year that Mourinho was there. A couple of years, but it was in 2009. Amazing. I've been to uh, the Camp Nou. Also saw Messi play, uh, I think Thierry Henry was there at that point still. And they played uh, the Yellow Submarine. Was it uh, Villarreal or something like that? And then I've been to Old Trafford twice now because my Sweet. team is Manchester United since the Thank 90s, you. actually. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's You've my had some good secret. Ones. Yeah. I, I imagine the San Siro to be incredible. It really was. It was nuts. <laughs> People were nuts though too. Like the away fans, they have that fi uh, that like big plexiglass uh, separating yeah, home yeah. and away fans to like hold so, them back. <laughs> yeah, and they still try to like climb around and do crazy stuff too. Oh. So it's like, hmm. All right, I get a little sniff of caramel. Yeah, it's like a Definitely spicy, buttery caramel, like a holiday candy. I was gonna say, I did that straight from the bottle, and that's what I took from it. 
Yeah, but <laughs> butterscotch, yeah. Butterscotch, yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, tons of butterscotch up front. A little bit of nutmeg on the finish. Nice burn. I call it the hug, Kentucky hug, when it burns your throat a little bit. Because I'm from Kentucky originally. So don't hold that against me, though. <laughs> I don't have that funny accent or nothing. See, I'm you bad just, at many accents. I was going to say, do you just bring that out at different occasions? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> not really. My, It's funny. My wife is, was very disappointed a couple of years into our relationship. She uh, admitted to me that she was always kind of, she was glad that I didn't speak like that all the time, but also kind of hoped that with a couple of drinks in me, I might, I might slip into it a little bit or something. And uh, it never <laughs> happened unless it was on purpose, of course. But uh, I was like, sorry. Well, and, did a uh, lot of people where you grew up have accents or like, I feel like it's no, just not no. a very. I, I was in Northern Kentucky. Yeah. So right across the river from Cincinnati, most of the times I would for, it was just easier to tell people I was from Cincinnati because it's kind of the area. It's almost like a suburb of, but it's all very urban. And so, no, no one speaks like that. You go down to like Lexington and then they have that accent. I don't have that problem. It's just, it's just monotone, just straight through. In fact, I had like the weird thing that I don't know if it's because like, well, my partner slept, well, my wife now is American, but the conferences I went to last year when people would meet me, they'd be like, Oh, we thought we thought you were from America. We thought you were American. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, you've got kind of a posh accent, if you ask me. So, Blah, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've just offended him. We, I know. See, I was, I, yeah. I kept nudging, and I, yeah. I knew I'd get there eventually. Yeah. Matt Pocock uh, what, told us that British people don't like posh accents. I think you sound too, uh, I, you know. <laughs> I like I like British accents, yeah. um, and uh, I do tend to think that like i just trust them more i don't know what it is it's like with a uh, okay scouse accents notwithstanding most british accents make me feel like i i trust i don't know whatever I'm, i even my like directions um through whatever siri or whatever uh i change it over ways i change ways over to use a british accent i just am like yeah you tr you know where you're going just let me know <laughs> that's fair know. that's fair yeah yeah i mean now does I'm my accent like... uh give off trust probably not yeah. no <laughs> i don't think i've ever changed the accent on ways and now i want to oh <laughs> they have some yeah, fun there's, voices yeah there's some fun ones on there they did like c3po for a little while was on there wasn't like samuel jackson or something on there there's some weird ones too though yeah oh, i'm gonna have to have a look yeah I'm it's definitely. it's it's good fun <laughs> It gets, and then after a while it gets old, you go back to the British lady telling me where I should go. Uh, so I always find it funny that you, well, just random things to talk about ways, but yeah, when okay. they did like, uh, they did like, you could use like things from Halo, like the video game mm -hmm. as like yeah. your car, it's <laughs> just kind of cool. But it's just like, just little touches like that I really appreciate. Yeah. In, like, Trying UI to like stuff. gamify it a little or something. Yeah. 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 Driving is boring. Do this. I only realized how heavily influenced I am by like video games and random things that are like on TV and stuff. Uh, in the last, yeah, the last, the last conference talk I gave, I think I made a point of saying like, "Hey, it was only when I did this deck like I realized how much influence I get from like old Arnold Schwarzenegger films or like Transformers oh, yeah. or <laughs> yes, yes, See, and yeah. it just filters into my into my like creations. It's like, oh, okay." Now it no, makes that's sense. interesting. <laughs> so are you are you Gen X? Um I don't I do you know I don't even know what brackets they fall into. I th well, so I think Gen X is basically so I was born in seventy seven and I think Gen X is somewhere around like eighty two or I don't know. So early eight, yeah. pretty early eight. A little bit later than that. Okay. Than All right, that. that's fair. Where uh, basically my earliest like so I brought this one up um on this this tangent now but i brought this one up uh because there was a demo i did at the last conference at css day and um basically like a fond childhood memory of mine is and i don't know why uh my grandparents had it but they had like a vhs tape of the original transformers movie mm. and my childhood memory is just watching that on repeat pretty much oh yeah ultra <laughs> like, it's one of the, like 
yeah, it's just a really fond film for me. So like, yeah. even though it's before before I was around, I don't know. I just love that. Just love those cartoons. So I yeah. may or may not have seen that in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Didn't they have like had Orson Welles as like the uh, as um, Unicron? <laughs> Unicron, exactly. So we though should before again before going off the rails too much. We do a rating system for the whiskeys that we try. It's very specific and scientific. It is from zero <laughs> to eight tentacles. Uh, zero being horrible. Basically spit this out and throw it down the toilet. Four, middle, middle of the road. Good stuff. Not terrible. Not amazing. Eight, obviously being like, if I'm going to have alcohol, it will always be this. I mean, that might be excessive, but uh, I like to keep pushing the boundaries on that. And so... Robbie, do you think you're ready to give it a rating? It's hard to say since we don't know the exact mash bill, but yeah. I like it. I think in the category of normal bourbons, it's a little better than some I've had. Uh, so I'm going to give it a five and a half, I think. That's fair. Jay, do you have any thoughts or feelings about this? So it's kind of hard for me to base it or compare it to anything. Um. <laughs> you could compare it to just like, any yeah. whiskey you've ever had and, or <laughs> yeah. just spirits in general yeah. no or, i was gonna i was along the same lines actually i was gonna say probably around i was gonna go six that was gonna be my number because i like it i i think it's really nice but i maybe a little less on the uh on the burn and i'd be like just right yeah so i i, 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 I do like it i like the taste of it it's nice I think if you let it hang out in those ice cubes for a few more minutes. Yeah, that's probably... why like it's is is working its way in. It's yeah. getting nice with each one. So <laughs> Yeah. And so I was saying, I think uh, off air, that this is was one of my go to's back in the day when I started getting into nicer whiskeys. Availability, uh it was like an easy one to pick up. Most folks would like it. Sort of like an elevated maker's mark kind of thing. This isn't weeded though, like that. So for regular bourbons, even though it's harder to to get now, I don't think the price is crazy. Typically, it's usually between sixty and eighty bucks. It's still age dated ten years. Love that. So it's like a nicer Buffalo Trace. I I might give it a seven for me. I think mm -hmm. this is like still still hits for me. I do like so, it. I have to say, yeah. it is nice. Yeah, I'm like I'm tearing I'm, up because it's like. It's melted a little. It's kind of like, yeah, it's working its magic. I'm glad we were able to pick one that that you like, because sometimes you know, sometimes we pick ones that we've never tried, and uh, that, that neither of us have ever tried, <laughs> and it and it doesn't work out, you yeah. know. And it's like, luckily, we're sending this to you, and you're not like we're not like, hey, go buy this whiskey, and it sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, would you take that risk? Well, I could have and, mixed it or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's heavy, yeah. heavy on the Pepsi. <laughs> right. We didn't say, uh, I don't know if they even have it there, but uh, there's like a peanut butter whiskey that is disgusting. Oh. And... Yes. Yeah, so I have seen this and um, I questioned this because I was like, what? do you know, I feel like I feel like we might have seen it in Costco or something like that. That would make sense. And I was like, what is that about? Like, Wait, you to... have Costco? Yeah. I've got one like 20 I minutes. I can move there. Me. I can move there. Perfect. <laughs> this Costco is the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so is the tentacle system based on what's behind you? It mm. is. Yes. So I, I see there's like a tentacle creature peering out behind you. Yeah. Yeah. So for the podcast, it's part of the logo for the podcast. And then it's also for our agency. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's a yeah, mythical creature. Yeah, you know, octopi are fun. Not related to whiskey, really, but still. Well, that was why I, yeah, questioned the, the tentacle rating system and then being like, well, it's got to be to do with the logo behind you. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We're cool. something different. Well, that's the best way. I mean, I, in no shape or form, look like a bear, but, you know, well, I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. up for debate. I yeah, we will. Let's just go out of order here because I did have a question for later about what's up with the bear. So, like, where did that start? And yeah, it's kind of a weird one. Like, socials and stuff, I hadn't really got into at that point. And when I, I used to like dabble in, it's a long story. So, my back end is like logic and middleware engineering. I didn't start with any sort of visual skills, shall we say? 
And then I kind of moved gradually as time's gone on. I picked up like animation skills and design skills and things. And, and at the point in time, I was starting my own limited and I didn't have much money and I needed a logo. So I decided now's the time to learn how to create SVGs and go down like the Inkscape hole and learn how to do all this stuff. And I pretty much always, well, I'm pretty much renowned for wearing hats. Eric Rasmussen always comments that I always have this, this hat on with the red thing. And he made a comment when we met in Miami earlier this year. He was like, oh, he looked just like it. He had the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a load of them behind me, the red ones up there. But uh, do you know what? I'll just put the red one on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I didn't recognize you without the red one. <laughs> there we go. Now we're on. Oh, there we are. <laughs> yes. Let's sort it out. Until I just got out of the shell. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the red one that I would normally wear. I had made an avatar that was a cat, like with some shades on, like some Ray Bans and a snapback. And I just made it as like a random thing. I was like, yeah, that'd be cool as an avatar because I didn't really want a photo of my face. I don't know where the love for bears came from, but I've always kind of had them. Uh, had it and then I was like oh, this cat sucks so I kind of like went down this route of I'm gonna learn how to draw these bears and then for a while because I didn't like having my face anywhere I just used the bear as an avatar and then I started posting more online when like the pandemic hit like that January was when I started like posting demos and things and like oh let's give this X thing ago. Um, <laughs> and then people were like, do you have a face? Because I just used my avatar for so long. And then it was like, oh, right, well, I'll actually like, bring out my face. So the bear just kind of evolved. And then because I had learned logo design as more of a necessity, because I didn't want to pay a designer for it, um, <laughs> I revisited it earlier, like, well, pre a year or so ago now and I was like it kind of it was kind of like one of those nice skills to pick up because I was like the original was terrible like I couldn't use it in other places it wouldn't work on a t like I had t-shirts and hoodies done people like bought them but it doesn't work you know in compared like I learned stuff about so I learned stuff about like you know how to design because that can't just be like dropped on anything whereas that you can make it one tone and you can just drop it anywhere, right? Like it'll work on any background. You can change that to all red and it's still going to work. Whereas when you start going with like all these colors. So I, I, I learned a lot of things and that's kind of one thing that I'm kind of driven by. I love like learning different stuff. So I'll just be like, oh, this was sweet. Like I learned all about SVG and then I was inspired by things I saw on CodePen and I was like, all right, I'm going to learn how to animate and it snowballs and then you're like, right now I want to learn about FreeJS and now I want to learn about this framework and that framework. And yeah, it's funny, like people, I don't know, it's the people that kind of know me or have worked with me know that I, I cover a lot of different things. But then if you only seen me from an online perspective, you'd think that, oh, he just he just makes CSS demos all day long. But it's really <laughs> not my background at all. <laughs> right. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. My, my hobby. Well, yeah, it was always like, amazing. So you know, <laughs> doing React from like V zero one, mm. and so you know all about the taint. God. <laughs> I've seen this, <laughs> <laughs> but I went through all that stage. You know, when that was the teething problems. I did Angular JS. Yeah. I did Backbone. Like, yep, yep. I feel you. I feel your pain. Periods and yeah. like that, that's that's kind of like where my um my real like uh, curiosity and like the. I don't like saying passion because it just feels like cliche, but that's where I enjoy being like stuck in yeah. a node file or like some like cranking logic and things. Oh yeah. The animation stuff is like all just, it's just fun. Like it's fun stuff to make. It's also it's, a lot sexier than like, look at this function that, yes. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Sorts. And this is what I always tell people. I'm like, look, I could post that like I've just refactored this into some sweet server component, but like no one's going to care. Yeah. <laughs> look at the <laughs> big O so, notation so wait a minute, on this. Wait a minute. The time you're, is you're so in, much better. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, are you contractually obligated to like app directory and RSC? <laughs> um, I am not. Um, 
we're advised to uh yeah for like you know think freely <laughs> no nice very nice <laughs> and Excellent. give all our feedback and stuff like yeah it's to be fair like i couldn't be happier where i am at the moment but i did actually i actually really like the idea of app directory obviously everything has its pluses and uh, pros and cons but i just like the idea of like it feels like with react we kind of went through this like oh this is a good idea yeah everyone likes this and then like like let's just put everything in the client and now we're going to this point where it's like actually let's just skim out the dx part because that's the bit that people like and let's try and make it as light as possible on the client and it's like ah oh, we're finally going the right way that's that's how i feel about it like it feels like the way it's kind of shifting like when we do like server actions and things kind of feels more better for the end user some of the speed of some of these apps that use it is just like like blows my mind like i've opened it on a new tab and it's loaded before i even got there and it's like wow that's that's really good like, and i'm not expecting it like and i feel like yeah there's a lot of opinions out there about this stuff but i think even as like users we're still discovering things about it like i think it kind of makes us think of it differently no, I, that's how I approach most things. Like, I think, you know, just be open-minded about it and just see, see where it takes you. You just never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, there's a phrase, you know, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Uh, I don't know why that's a good phrase or even a commonly no. known phrase, <laughs> yeah. but uh, very, like don't skin cats, yeah. no matter which way, you know, you choose. <laughs> yeah. But like, obviously it just means, mul you know, multiple paths to the same solution. I think we are like facing another time of that where like there's a lot of different really smart ways to do things and it's kind of like choose your favorite adventure to get there, which is pretty exciting to me, which is why I like, well, I used to threaten that I was just going to be a YAML developer. Now I think I'm just going to like, um, you know, do <laughs> like rails or yeah, or something. Well, that's know? what I kind of love about, um, like I love, I love how, Astro kind of changed some perspectives when that dropped because it was yeah. the whole like, you can write whatever you want. You just <laughs> yeah, you just do a React component and then over there you could do some view and you can just drop it all in the same thing. And I yeah. think like that's just a magical developer experience. It's like mm -hmm. oh sweet, like I can just dip in and use the bits I want here and there. Yeah, yeah. I just think like that's really special. And I think that kind of starts making other people think like oh actually, like maybe I can do things a bit differently. Maybe I don't need to ship all this stuff exactly is, you know yeah i think at the end they, of the day everyone's just trying to ship something good for their end user right <laughs> yeah yeah i think they noticed you know that everyone loved frameworks and these huge javascript things but like we didn't actually need half of it like the whole like you know if you have a hundred items and you want to like render them in a loop right but you actually don't care about that happening it should just like be spit out as a static html file with 100 things in it like that's mm -hmm. probably right. the thing you really want instead of that happening in real time <laughs> like this reminds right. me of like uh, like early on in framework days angular js mode i was doing a contract like this is quite a few years ago now obviously angular js but there was always that issue with angular js of like you can't render loads of things in a list that's why you just reminded me of it when you got to like big numbers you had to put in these weird hacks so you'd be writing like a i can't remember what the was it directives i can't remember what they called it like the controller sort of thing you would do but you'd end up writing something and then what you'd end up doing is taking the data and actually using something like handlebars or a templating lib to render the html for you because you wouldn't want it to be controlled by angular because it would just slow the whole thing down <laughs> and it was like wow that should they those sorts of things should have been alarm bells then but then react dropped and everyone was like whoa this is going to be different now <laughs> it's like it is obviously it's much much different it's a much more mature uh, ecosystem but it's but kind even of at that time it was you know i i can recall coming from a backbone marionette app and then being able to do all these things. It, it's funny because I remember uh, we just created like um, essentially like uh, identity components and we dropped them into Django, right? Post load and then boom, you do some magic stuff and then they can log in and get some personalization and all that kind of stuff. And it was like, oh wow, I can do this in isolation on a on an just regular server, you know, returned page that was mind-blowing and then we went really far that direction and now i think we're 
starting to ask the questions of what's a good balance there or you know when do we need all of that when do we need less of that when do we need none of that i think you bring up a good point astro really started to make us from a de developer pers perspective sorry i can't call i can't talk today no, I say maybe i should do it in a british accent and then <laughs> you'll both trust me and <laughs> okay so what region does my accent speak to oh i I it's just bullshit you. TV. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Right? Like that? I'm terrible with uh, regions and things. So. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I'm just yeah. monotone. Just down south. Just near, like, <laughs> down near south. That's kind of it. international. I blend in with everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use your American Express here. You know, it's like a commercial <laughs> voice or something. Anyway, I don't know. I can identify. Well, at least we, we both said uh, perspective on the bingo card, but we haven't reached for specificity yet. So Ooh. we're okay. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one normally for me. That, that's, uh, that's tough when you're like presenting something like, I don't know, like CSS cascade layers, and you've got <laughs> to say it about six times, and you're like, how did I get through that? <laughs> <laughs> and i don't use that word at any point in my life otherwise that's weird yeah yeah, yeah. right <laughs> but no, i think uh it's interesting to hear someone else doing backbone marionette as well i still have an app like living on github pages that's backbone marionette wow. still works still works fine well that app we built over a year or so when i worked for national geographic and it went out in beta and then got crushed so Ooh. it's dead Womp womp. That yeah. was a that was an interesting little like framework tool though. It was kind of, it was like one of the first ones that kind of made you think a bit differently about what you were doing. But yeah. the only bit that I, I remember is uh, well, not the only bit I remember, but one of the bits that always sticks out is how you would do like the event handling in strings, right? So you'd be like, what was it? Was it like button? Like it'd be like button at click or something like that, and then you would yeah. map it to the function or something, and it'd be like, this is weird. <laughs> but then yeah. you know people do it straight in the attribute in other things so it's like it's kind of cool you think that was weird though what about this whole like when uh redux first kind of started going and then there were all these like packages around redux and you had thunk and sagas and stuff like that and it would you like action here but then the states over there which gets triggered to run through and that whole yeah. uh yeah that whole period was amazing like i remember <laughs> I remember my first, uh, so one thing like, because I didn't really, well, I, I didn't really hop online or anything like that around that time when like Redux was dropping. And I remember I was doing a contract at the time and it was like, that was coming out. Someone had uh, gone and done a bit of research and had a look at it and they like sat down to like pair up with me. And uh, they were like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just walk you through how this Redux works. And I remember the first time someone showed me that and I was just like, what? <laughs> Mm -hmm, yeah. what is this like this this is wild and now you think about it and you think oh it makes perfect sense you know you just dispatch the action yeah it, it never everyone, made sense to me <laughs> everyone just subscribes to the actions and it all makes nice sense it's funny like one of the biggest not the biggest trauma but when anyone uh, brings up redux the thing i remember is when everyone thought hey hooks is out you've got use context right Let's just build our own Redux. And everyone seemed to like go on this rite of passage where they just, we're going to do it. We don't need Redux anymore. And everyone just did a use context thing. And everyone just ended up, oh, we basically ended up rewriting Redux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. We, we did it. We like wrote, a, we tried using context for a conference app. It was good. Like it worked. But then we realized, oh, wait, like in Redux, I would have just done this. Right. Well, I'll just write that functionality in. Oh no, now I need that. And you ended up just like basically building your own. Yeah. And it's like, mm. But people enjoy that. So everyone does it. They like building shit for like the sake of building it. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. those kind of things are good. They are good for learning. Like, yeah. You learn a hell of a lot about like how things work from doing that. Like one of the things I always say to people is just, just have a go at building things from scratch. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And then reach for stuff later on if you want. Because you never know. That that's kind of why I build things that you can't just happy path. Because it's like you're gonna find out an awful lot by just trying to build something that you haven't seen before or you don't know how to build. You just go on a tangent of like, well, and break it up into little bits. 
and then be like, right, well, that kind of worked, that kind of worked. And in the end, you kind of mishmash it all together and you learn a load of little tricks and then you'll take them somewhere else. And yeah, it just kind of goes like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like a cascade. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, during that crazy Redux time, I I got to have a break for a little while, and I went and learned Ember JS, and that's actually how Robbie and I met. And I was like, "Wow, they've made all these decisions for me. Just do what they say, and it works. No shit. Oh my gosh." Yeah, Ember Data was like, "Oh my gosh, such a smart, fun state management store." Except when it's not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Until you want to go off the rails. If you're doing it all JSON API spec, then yeah, it's like, let me just hit save and it like does my post to save all my data or whatever behind the scenes. But like, yeah, if you're like, oh, I'm going to follow whatever format I want. It's like, no, I didn't work. (laughs) Yeah. 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 In in the uh, REST API, Wild Wild West, it gets harder for Mm -hmm. sure. Fortunately, it's one that I've just not, it's one of the ones I didn't get, haven't like been able to spend much time with. I've only briefly played with Vue since React landed. It's always just been, it's always just been React or like Next. Or, right. I've played in Astro quite a bit, but they're yeah. the ones that I never got to like have a proper play with. Like Vue is yeah. a good one that I, I I like it, but just never those opportunities never came up. And Ember's one that I dabbled with, and then it was like I never got to use it like commercially. So it's like yeah. ah, because I, right. I I've heard it's like very good when you use it on like real stuff. Depends yeah, on your because, definition like, of good. It's the DX. <laughs> yeah. The DX is unbeatable, in my opinion. The performance. Right. It doesn't have like server side rendering. It it does, but like it's an afterthought. It's like so you know yeah. it, there there's give and take. If it's for like an internal JavaScript heavy dashboard, I think it's the best thing you could use. But if it's for like a marketing site, don't touch that. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's way too opinionated. Yeah, that shit. and and Astro is your tool for that mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Right for a marketing site, it's like crazy yeah. town to reach for a framework. Really, in general, yeah. what about Spelt? Yeah. I would think you yeah, might have some ask Spelt. Spelt. Uh, yeah, I've had a little play with it. Again, it's not one that I've I've really pushed much to production with, but I have played with it a fair bit. There's a good community around that. People really like it, especially at the moment. Everything there's a lot of hype on app directory and like that mm-hmm. kind of thing. It's like hot hot topic. I mean, yeah, I think next, well, obviously there's the conference tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? Yep, tomorrow. <laughs> and well, when you hear you are, this, it will have been weeks ago, but yes. Yeah, well, we'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, October 26th for conference. Remember the conf? For recording. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Remember that thing? Yeah, that thing Guillermo said was insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe he announced that, that he's giving away all his shares <laughs> to Jay. It's the new CEO. Let's see where you take it. Anyway, I'm here for the jokes. I don't know. There are a couple of these hot takes that I do want to ask him. So I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, Regress back to those. I like hot takes. I don't know which Uh, of them are actually hot anymore, but uh, just just jump in wherever you feel, feel like. Okay. So your CSS experiments, how much harder or easier would they be using Tailwind? They're not too bad. I was hoping this topic would come up actually because <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually really like Tailwind. So Ooh. I think it's one of them again. People just love a love a little poke something in the fire, you know. Oh that'll yeah. that'll get some that'll get some hot takes, some spicy action online. But Exactly. And I, I actually I disagree with the negative takes on both sides, if that makes sense. Like I think everyone should just be happy. That it exists for reasons. Like I, I use it. Like I use it on my on my site. The thing with Tailwind is, I don't know. People just get hooked on it, thinking it's like some kind of weird bootstrap where people don't know what CSS is or something. I don't know. But at the end of the day, it is still CSS, and everything you can do in CSS, you can do in Tailwind. You just configure it to do it, and it works. I think people get blinded by the syntax and don't appreciate the real value it brings. And the value it brings is tackling the hardest piece of CSS, which is making it performant and structuring it and not repeating it and like creating bloated files because you've written display grid 84 times across your repo. That's the issue. One thing I would say like to 
people if they're uh, starting out and they're not sure of these things and they want to understand a bit more, try building a, a site from scratch with nothing, like no tools, just HTML, CSS, JS, maybe a bundler, right? Like V or something, I don't know. When you get to the page speed insights part of your project, depending on how many pages you've got, you'll get hit with, hey, your CSS could be quicker. And you'll be like, damn, what do I need to do now? But you might end up going down this route where you're like, right, well, now I need to think about which styles are critical, which ones are above the fold, right? So, right, how am I going to do that? And then you go down this route that I've done this, like, because I'm a nerd and I like, you know, in a good sense, like, I love these kind of problems. So, yeah, my wife got that surprise. <laughs> we had one over the holidays. I'm like, she'd be thinking I'm doing the animation. I'm actually... I'm going to make this image optimization great and I'm going to make my styles really good so I get better page speed insight scores and I'll spend a week doing it if I have to. You know? <laughs> but I'll, I'll happily sit in a node script and be like, I'm going to work out which styles I need at runtime and then I'm going to extract them into a critical file and I'm going to inline them in the head and then I'm going to load all the below styles at the end of the body and I'm going to get my page speed insight scores right down. But that stuff takes time and you need to kind of understand what you're doing and and that's where Tailwind comes in and just says, do you know what? I'll work all that out for you. you just, yeah, you just build your components. And you just drop your little files in here and you can configure some if you want and add them in. But I'll worry about making the file as small as possible and loading it for you in somewhere. And you don't worry about it because you'll only load a little minimal piece of like styles and that'll be it. And you can put all the new experimental stuff in Tailwind. The last article I wrote for Smashing was about the new linear function in CSS. So there's, there's a new function where you can essentially draw like paths to create easing functions. So you can do like bounce or like elastic easing just with like function. But what I did was I, uh, I added them all to a Tailwind config and did like a Tailwind play at the end of the article. So you could go and use them in Tailwind and it'd just be like, you just write ease bounce out or bounce in and it would, it would work fine. And it's like, I, I kind of love using it because it makes it makes a lot of sense in components because you're just going to write once and the only thing that I would like and the tool that I started building was um, like just like a almost like a linter but like an analyzer that would look across your repo and say how many times have I used a specific Tailwind class name because like, I feel like sometimes you know if there's one instance where you've accidentally written MB4 or something and everywhere else you're using MB6 and you'd be like, oh, I forgot about that one. And like, I want to know where it is. Like, that's the only thing that sometimes I'm a bit like, did I accidentally leave a flex somewhere? You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the only thing I'm sometimes unsure of. It hasn't caught me out yet, but sometimes I'm thinking like, but that's where like visual regression testing or things like that would come into play anyway on something big. But yeah, I'm always like, oh, I wonder if I left a little sneaky text white somewhere. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the big benefits that people don't think about often is like we've probably all worked in enterprise size apps that have like, you know, those big CSS files where people are like, no, don't touch that one because like that's yeah. that's maybe used. We're not sure. Just don't touch it. And you just ship, you know, a megabyte of extra CSS for no reason. And if you're using Tailwind utility classes, when you delete your HTML that you're not using anymore, it goes away. Like it just you don't... does all that tidy up for you. Yeah. And I think at scale, like I, I really recommend it because it's just gonna take that decision making process out of the way for you. Like it's an added stress that you don't need. Like especially if you're trying to ship something quick. Like I just wanna ship the thing, get out the door. I don't wanna be thinking, Oh, damn, the performance is bad. Like, I just want to worry about something, making something that looks good, gives a direct call to action or whatever, gives whatever my user needs. If I need some scripts thrown in there to do some client side stuff, that's great. And then the styling part is like my last little sprinkle of sugar, but I don't want to be worrying about like, well, oh, I don't want to add too many styles because it's going to, it's going to hamper performance. So yeah. that's like how you always kind of approach it in the, you know, HTML, then the JS, then like you're building a house, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you got to trust the machines. I mean, right? Give them good instructions. You get a good output. Like, I don't know. I I, I tend to listen. Uh, in the future, I want my robot overlords to know that I I respected them. You know, <laughs> and let me live. That's so it. they treat yeah. you well. Yeah, they treat me well. You kept your Roomba clean. 
Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, I've kept it clean. I've done the maintenance. I, you know, take it apart, give it a new battery, everything. So <laughs> it won't kill me. Do you have a, how do you find your Roomba? Any good? Uh, oh. yeah, I like, I like it. I, yeah. <laughs> maybe this is a little like sexist or something, but I bought mm. it for my wife as a gift. Um, mm, that's like style. buying the Peloton for the wife, like that big controversy. Uh, <laughs> like I only bought ago. it cause she asked for it. I was like, Hey, they sent me something like with a sale or something. And I, and she already had a spin bike. She's very into that. It used to be a spin instructor actually. But, uh, uh, I was like, Hey, this came up. You want that? Yes. Okay. Done. I didn't suggest it. I just, yeah, but the optics yeah. don't, no one cares what, what the intention was. They still have to just no, blow yeah, it up. No. But anyway, so I don't share personal details. The Roombas. Spin we, bike's cool, but we now yeah. have three Roombas because we have one per floor. <laughs> An army of Roombas. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's more Roombas than yous. Sorry. Yep. It's going to be like that. Now this is an old film. Is it, uh, is it batteries not included? Yes, short well, circuit. Uh, batteries not included. Yeah. All Was the Roombas like... are going to turn into little spaceships. Yeah. <laughs> that that's my that's my uh, product idea. Roombas should be drones, so that you only need one, and it could fly to your next floor and vacuum it. Or you could set up your own service where you have like a fleet of them, and they just go and clean other people's houses. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There you go. There they you could go. fly and come in. <laughs> come in through some like little doggy door like thing <laughs> yeah. the Roomba service is here because there are uh there are drone mowers that are like fairly industrial strength so I feel like it could be a similar thing well we have like the uh, and I know they have them in some places in the states but um like the little six wheel robots with the flags and lights and they deliver mm -hmm. your groceries mm -hmm. just, I've like, seen these. them out on the streets like just yeah like I've seen these in a couple of like college areas where they do like delivery through yeah, those we, we little robots on campus. Yeah. So my, uh, my wife loves it whenever we drive past and they're like, oh, look, robots, robots. <laughs> <laughs> right. Robots, one day they turn around and shoot you or something. I don't they're know. They're kind of cool. Like they just wait, they wait yeah. at the traffic lights, you know, they take the time. And they, uh... Ooh. So I'm in Phoenix. There are cars like that here. You're Demo in Phoenix? Is here. I'm in Phoenix. So there are cars here that are driving by themselves and I can actually do like a Uber with a driverless car oh, wow. if I want. I haven't done That's it cool. yet, but I, I'm, I'm going to do it soon. So uh, my in-laws are in Arizona. What? Yeah. That's where my wife where? is at the moment. Um, Mesa. She's here? Yeah. In Mesa? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the same hood. I mean, it's basically like, you know, whatever suburb of Phoenix. Yeah. It's like 20 minutes from my house. <laughs> That's that wild. Is, that is wild. That's we're, crazy. We were there well, at Christmas. We, did, uh, we went mountain biking um, in the, yeah, the hills. Hit me up next time you're here. Yeah, that's cool. Small world. That is, yeah, that is really funny. <laughs> I'm, it's I, funny. Well, I might be there soon. So. All right. Well, I will be here for a while because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it, be, it gets colder everywhere else and it gets nicer here. So I just stay turns out yeah that was not we, yeah we were there at christmas and it was really nice like yeah i mean this is the place for christmas for sure so yeah yeah by the time <laughs> this is released you will have hung out probably yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's cool where are you robbie uh i am in great falls virginia so it's like about an hour from dc what's your address uh it's uh <laughs> No, I need to know yours off the top of my head so I can just list it off. But uh, <laughs> that'd be pretty funny. So thanks for letting me know. I'm never going to make sure you memorize my address. <laughs> just the office address or something. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I do want to. Virginia uh, was the, uh, the first time I ever went to the States was Virginia. Oh, really? Where I went to Virginia? Herndon. Oh, Herndon. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty that, close to me. So I can remember day, that as a metro stop. To this day, it's my favorite uh, like barbecue place I've ever been to. Um, mm. Called Red Hot and Blue, and it was yeah. I've heard of it. I have not had it. It's very good. <laughs> we, we can do a barbecue tour. You come here. There's a place called uh, Little Miss Barbecue that has the best brisket I've had outside of Texas. Yeah, you see, I haven't been to like where places are renowned for barbecue. 
Yeah. So yeah. Well, I think Texas is overrated. The- Ooh, spicy. Yeah. We're still in the hot takes. So we went. <laughs> we we went to. Uh, I think it was like it's pine something like pine pine in or i don't know it's like a famous uh barbecue joint in texas and there's like an hour long mm. line so you're right. like thinking it's gonna be amazing and i got it and i was like eh, it's food like it was not mm. great so what did you get and what are they known for because it does matter well i had some of everything i had some brisket some pulled pork um yeah, sides whatever like no. you it was fine lean in where they're known i mean obviously there's like they're gonna make a bunch of stuff and they run out of things or whatever but like Texas brisket is definitely kind of the thing. I think in like, you know, you go to like North Carolina or whatever, you want more like pulled pork yeah, and then vinegar they have some style. different sauces and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just the sauce, though, you know. Anyway, that could be, that. we should do a second a second episode all on barbecue because yeah, I can definitely barbecue. talk about this. I just love food in general, which, by the way, I want to say, I remember before I went to Europe, everybody was like, Oh, the food, the Brits, the food in Britain sucks. The food in the UK sucks. <laughs> Not at all my experience. I don't know. Uh, bubble and squeak, delicious. Bangers and mass, delicious. The Indian food there, now I've not been to India, so I can't compare it to that. But for me, it was the best Indian food I've ever it's had. Good. It's good. Really I spent good. a lot of time in Leeds, and I went to some places there that were just like insane. So anyway. Leeds was note. where I, uh, yeah, so Leeds is where I, gave my first conference talk and also where i met my wife so <laughs> wow <laughs> nice. randomly very nice um yeah yeah we we ate a really good restaurant there called the oxo club really good but yeah the, the food here is good but i was it was funny because i was about to say something which uh will probably well it might make you laugh but when you said about places running out the the sad thing is here that we don't really have uh, many Taco Bells, like just not a thing. <laughs> oh, now gosh. there is a Taco Bell about a twenty-five minute drive from me that regularly closes early because it runs out of food <laughs> on a Saturday. As it should. And that's how they stay in business. I love Taco <laughs> Bell, man. It's I was so going to say this is you are you are hitting a note with Robbie. We have this debate because I mean we're at, obviously Mexico is amazing food, but like mexican food in arizona just like hits right for me and it's hard for me to go and to this place that doesn't make mexican food it makes something else that kind of resembles it they don't claim i don't think it says anywhere mexican food i I need to (laughs) check that but i don't think it like they make you think that it's kind of implied but it's not yeah and as long as you get this it's fine if you get a crunchy beef taco supreme like that hits i'm like this is this is taco bell for me Everything else, oh, I don't Mexican know. Mexican pizza, man. There. That's the best thing. It's just a tostada. I don't know. My first, uh, yeah, the fir- that first time when I was in the States, when I was in uh, Herndon, like I, mm-hmm. had a, I had a car for the week, and um, every night I was like, what franchise am I in? Just to <laughs> right. like Taco Bell, Wendy's, <laughs> all the ones that you, you don't get here at the time. Yeah. So it's like, i got to try them. i got to try them. Yeah. And <laughs> Taco Bell was a good one. But yeah, Mexican food outside yeah. of if you're including taco bell is is really good over there like and it's yeah. one of the things that um my wife complains about a lot here is that mexican food is not good here like, right well especially where we we are here like it's it's just not very good you gotta learn and, to make it really yeah now i've seen it on the other side i'm like oh man it's so good you over get there. it like even have you like, been to in and out yeah yeah that's like okay. a tradition when we get into Arizona. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Just checking. I like yeah, the, jack, well, the Jack in the Box as well. Yeah. I like the shake. And you said you don't drink that much, so are you sure? What, Jack in the Box? <laughs> jack in the Box is like drunk food for sure. A sourdough Jack is interesting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you come here, hit me up. We'll do a little food tour. Yeah, there was one place. There was a place where we went for Mexican when we were in Arizona last, and it was really good. But I can't remember what it was called. It's like quite an old restaurant, um, probably TP or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I have to or ask. there's a uh, Macayos. There's it was there's good. no shortage of options. It. Yeah, there are a lot of options yeah. that are good. You know, there's like yeah. good and and then great, you know. <laughs> which are all good compared to yes, here. exactly. Yeah. So- <laughs> Yeah. In fact, I'd just take you to the Mexican grocery store and just have a field day. It's amazing. Yeah, that's one you can of the get things food well, there. Like, 
when you're here, it's like even just getting simple things like, you know, like queso cheese and stuff. It's just like not, it's just not the same. Like just never the same. It's like, oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Part of that, if you're comparing it to American stuff, is because in America we can use a lot of chemicals and stuff that are like not allowed in Europe. <laughs> we artificially extra flavor. It, yeah, that's true. But then again, like I've been to some incredible chippies in England and in in Ireland. They were just like, it's so simple. It's in a bag with just the right amount of salt and and, and malt vinegar on every single one. So you know. Yeah, off, it's hilarious when uh, when you look up a fish and chip place in like say Arizona or something, and it's like you yeah. look at the look at the images and you're like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We do have a place here called the Cornish Pasty that has like elevated the pasty. Like it's not just like a grab and go kind of thing. And they have have you been? The pasty is a big thing like in the south here. So like yeah. in uh, like Devon, Cornwall, like it's it's yeah. a big thing. And yeah, they are they are good. And yeah, you have the Cornish pasty co, right? It might be yep. the one that's yep. over there. Yeah. So yeah, that's like a, yeah. And she has like four or five here. locations now. It's like crazy. It's good. It's yeah. really good. It's just, it's just very different. It's like, a, I don't even know what to compare it to. Is it, would you I say I call them fancy hot pockets. You know, hot pocket. Well, it's almost you know like a, um, what's the pizza equivalent? A calzone. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a yeah, weird kind empanada. Of a lot of cultures actually have a calzone. version of this. Yeah, yeah. everybody There's made calzone. like There's... a flat one, and then went, "Could we fold it over?" Yeah, <laughs> you know it's portable. <laughs> fold it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone just made a a pizza with meat and vegetables and gravy, and just went, "Ah, we'll just oh, calzone man. it." We'll yeah, just calzone yeah. It. yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. last day in the oven for a bit. That's good. What can I stick in my pocket? Not a pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's why they call it a hot pocket. That and uh, sausage rolls, another good one. We have one here called uh, the Clanger. I don't, I don't think I know that. We're ever having one, um, mm. but yeah, there's some weird kind of pastry things you can get over here. I want to ask one more hot take before we move completely past that. Is CSS <laughs> yeah. a programming language? I mean, if we go from the technical, it's a style sheet. <laughs> but you're telling know, the computer like, how to style items. Yeah, I guess. Right? You're giving instructions. It does trig stuff now. Yeah, there's trig. There's also um now I can't remember what you group these as because I was messing around with a silly demo to make a triangle. Are they called exponential functions when you do like math.pal, math.square root? That sounds right. So that they're yeah. they're in there now as well. Okay. So you do like calc with a pow and a square root, which is wow. kind of interesting if you want to start doing like calculations and things. You can start doing like proper Pythagoras and stuff like that. And <laughs> there we go. I think the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, think once there's... you approach math calculations, uh, uh, to that HTML is not doing complex. That. <clears throat> no, I think it's, it's getting to the point where there's a lot more like capabilities so like, there's a lot of things you can do which replace the script alternative which kind of make right. you think a bit differently but because i spoke about it so often over the last year it feels like i've been shilling css has for like <laughs> the last 18 months or something you know <laughs> but when it does <laughs> finally land cross browser it's like it's still regarded or you know touted to be an absolute game changer across the board which it will be because it it has so many cool applications but at the same time it's like i still feel like there's loads of capabilities that people haven't even thought of or uncovered yet because that's what all these things need right all these things that come to the the platform that are coming down the line they they need people's perspectives or a fresh look at something to be like hey, why can't I do this with it? Or like, could I do that with it? And that's what kind of makes these APIs grow. Like, that's kind of like why when people would be like, why on earth did you make that? You're never going to use that in production. But actually, like I made this and it uncovered some bug in some API spec. And now because I made some silly demo, like that API when it lands might be more useful for you. It's kind of interesting. Like when you think about it like that, there was one I did... Well, there was a couple I did last year where it was like one I did with uh, the CSS anchoring spec, which was like 
I was doing something where I updated the the anchor position dynamically. And when it was initially implemented in Chromium, you could do transitions between the anchor positions. So like if you updated it, it would animate to the next one. Like it'd be animated like an insert copy or something. Something changed in the implementation as it evolved and the transition stopped working. So I raised this bug and I said, look, I made this demo where a bear paw moves between input fields, but it doesn't work anymore. But what it did was it triggered like a, a implementation like rewrite or a refactor to uh, support transitions. So it's like now when someone goes, when that spec does land eventually at some point, or, you know, it'll probably change a bit between now and then, but hopefully it will retain that behavior because of that funky little issue I raised ages ago. And it will be like, oh, sweet, like I can transition this. And it's like those little things. So like the more people try out stuff for their own use case, like the more everyone benefits in the long run because people have tried it or like seen a different way or just seen it through different eyes because it's really hard to try and think of like all the possible use cases. You know, I always think of like uh, when I used to contract, the mo some of the most fascinating people would be like the testing engineers or like the QA people because they could spot an edge case from a mile away that you'd never That's what I was going to say. Of. You suss out some edge cases by like pushing the boundaries yeah. and experimenting with these things. And they give you an API and you're like, great, let me try something weird and cool with it, not just I built a form. You know? Exactly, right? So like, yeah. that's like, it kind of echoes back to the initial idea of like how I would learn things or how I have learned things along the way, which is like, my line was always, uh, or is on my slide deck would be a, uh, go beyond the documentation, become it kind of thing. Like just follow mm. your ideas because uh, you just don't know what you learn from it. So you just supercharge yourself and you just become the docs because there are no docs for what you want. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And, and That's true. It just raises things and you can, yeah, you can help shape stuff, especially if you, if you end up working close to these kind of things. But some of them you don't need to. Like there's open, open UI. That's an open group. People can go and join that and get involved with like these these platform things that are like coming down the line. Some of them are really cool, but it's just interesting. It's interesting to see that side of things. Like I hadn't seen it until I did that work. So it was like, it was kind of cool to see, but to think like, oh, actually the more people get involved with it, the easier it becomes for the spec rise and things because they see oh, yeah. more things and it's easier to get it in early doors and get it like as cover as many things as they can as opposed to like later down the line. <sighs> Oh, we didn't kind of cater to that. The API doesn't yeah. quite fit for that. And it's you like need fresh eyes, essentially, right? Like you're like trying to lead something with some bias, essentially. Like it just ends up, it's not intended, but, you know, it just ends up being like a natural artifact of doing new things and documenting what you think are certain assumptions. And then you have someone come in and do some crazy shit with that. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Didn't realize that was a thing. Yeah, it was pretty much, well, it still is pretty much what I try to do. I'm always like, eh, I wonder if I could shoehorn that in to do what I want. Or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of yeah. do this. And you, you, you learn a lot doing that. And it's not just like CSS. It's like even like JavaScript or like, you know, Canvas, React, FreeJS, Greensock, whatever you want to use. It's like always makes you think, ah, oh, could I do that? Or would that work? Would it, would it do what I want there? And like a lot of the time you you find a way. One of the weird demos, I, obviously at the time of this, this will be ages ago now, but it was like a little Apple tear strip thing, right? And it was like someone posted a video of this like tear strip concept, like like the Apple box kind of thing. And I was like, oh, how would you do that? Like you would grab it and then you would want to maybe use like a clip path and then that would hide part of the backing. And then as you pull it, like you're dragging it. But then I want like drag resistance. So when I first tug it, it needs to not move as much. And then as I go past then it eases off and then I get to the end and then, well, now I need to be able to move it around because I've gone past the end. And then when I drop it, it should just go away. And then, and like all these little ideas and things come up and then they're all little things that you tackle along the way, but each one picks up a new skill or something new that you found or some, and then it just, like as you said earlier, it snowballs. And then like they're new things that you take into the next thing and your, your knowledge just picks up and you're like, oh, I just use that trick from that one and that trick from that. And then you just become like to the point where you're like, I can just build whatever I want. That's cool. And that's what I used to do when I freelance. I'd just be like, you can dream it. I can do it. You know, 
It's just pixel right. art. And that's what I well, would always I was, say to people. I was trying to look for a second because I wanted to try to quote him, but I feel like, um, so Ken Wheeler said something about one of your postings recently. Like It was something like, I just learned more about CSS by seeing this than I have in like my last 10 years of dev. <laughs> something like that. You know, I'm paraphrasing or a little buzzed and forgetting half of it. But uh, I think that's exactly it, right? Like you can learn so much by going off script and just let me recreate this thing and see what, where that gets me. Or, oh, there's a new feature. What weird shit can I do with that? But they're not telling me. Yeah, and you even know? exploring some of the like, just specs and like random things. That there's, there's so much out there. It's funny, I was watching a colleague's podcast interview and he mentioned an app I went and checked out, and the first thing I noticed was they had a number counter of like dollars on the home page, and it was shifting all over the place. And I was like, man, they just need to throw some font, like font very numeric on there or whatever. Um, I don't even think that's is that even the right property. It'd be alright if I was in the ID. Something like I'm a lot dumber than you, so I don't know. <laughs> there's font. There's I'm font just nodding my head. Yes. Oh, there's font. There's font feature settings tnum, and then there's font variant tabular nums or numeric font variant numeric tabular nums i don't know it'd be fine if i'm in the editor i'd just do it but <laughs> yeah so i i put it into dev tools reloaded it and i was like oh that fixed it so then i was like no, i'll just post that i'll just post that as a funny one like hey just a reminder if you're going to animate numbers like because i for some reason like i found and i don't know like if it's just i spend so much time in front of animations or I've become like more sensitive to some of these things recently like more color like things or like more animations I'm a bit like ooh, that's caught me off a bit or like I'm like let's dull this down a bit and um I just notice things like that more but especially with the numbers thing I was just like I just post it out there and that that's quite an old property but there's so many cool things you can do with that property right so if you had like a fraction you can get in CSS you can just get like a three over a four or something there's just a CSS property that will render it and lay it out for you all those kind of things so this is kind of sweet like you can do all those kind of things but they're like little properties that people might not be as aware of because they're not commonly used but they are pretty clutch when you need them yeah you don't know what you don't know it's uh hard to know the fix for that if you had no idea if that existed so yeah <laughs> yeah you might be thinking like, especially, I think when I posted that, people were like, oh, I'd try and, like, lay this out in a grid. And you could do it with, like, a grid if you padded it out or, you know, you look for different... Or people would just be like, oh, I just use a monospace font. Well, that's fine. But what if your designer says, no, it needs to be in this font? That's out of your hands. <laughs> you can't turn around and go, well, the only way I'm going to animate this is if it's JetBrains Mono. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and they're so, like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, we are over time here now. So is there anything you want to plug or mention before we end? I don't, I don't really have anything to plug. I just... Uh, bears and yeah, bears. red snapbacks? Or... <laughs> yeah, really. Get, get your hats now. At, um, no, I don't sell any hats. So. You work for you that place, sell, Burkle or you whatever. You should sell with the, <laughs> yeah. with the red and then a bear on the other side. I, I do have that. ones with bears on. Oh, do you? I haven't found anywhere to like... I just have a wall of hats behind me. So right. We do uh, I don't know. All I see is Manchester United colors. So I guess that's who you support or well, I'm an awesome say otherwise. Supporter, so I'm a fan. Oh. <laughs> We're well, Arsenal in this I, house. Uh, I rescind all my invites. No, I'm just kidding. It's not that serious. It's, <laughs> no, the, it's not um, 2005 anymore. I'm not too worried, even though you're doing a lot better. No, that's debatable. It's still yet to win anything, you know. So... <laughs> That's fair. But no, there's a, I don't think it's a minute to plug. I guess it's a, it's more of a watch this space kind of thing. Come find me on the interwebs and uh, follow along for the journey. Because there are some things yeah. we want to build. Like we want to build a new CSS-related blog site. That is something we're working on. Yeah. CSS tricks. <clears throat> what? <laughs> oh. and, uh, that's, you could probably yeah, buy it for pretty for cheap now. <laughs> I don't know. The traffic's probably pretty good. I don't. I don't know what Chris got, but yeah. he's doing all right. Yeah. Uh, well, pe people have people have suggested that I build something like that, and um, I've also this week had suggestions of doing a book or something, which is something I've always thought like 
like an anthology of walking through different types of demo and the tips and tricks yeah. you can pick up along the way. So that's something maybe cool. I'm thinking about. And then yes. um, hopefully we'll be doing a front end masters course like next year. So that'll, that'll be quite cool. cool. So follow Jay and see what comes. See that's what, what comes. I say. It's all, uh, you know, who knows? I didn't realize, I didn't think I'd be sitting here last year. You know? so. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks everyone for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe, leave us ratings and reviews. We appreciate it. And we will catch you next time.